Mixtures are created when we take two different materials and we mix them together. You can see lots of different examples of mixtures here. But this video is going to talk about one specific type of mixture. This video is about solutions and there's an example of a solution here. Mixing salt and water creates a solution. We've mixed them, it is a mixture, but it also is a solution and solutions all have one very important characteristic in common. So solutions are formed when two materials are evenly mixed together. So we normally think of solutions as being liquids, liquid solutions, but it's important that you understand that being evenly mixed is what makes something a solution. So when I take copper and zinc and I melt them and I take the copper and zinc that's melted and I evenly mix it, I end up with brass. That's how I get brass by melting those two metals and evenly mixing them together. So technically that alloy, that brass is a solution. The same thing with the air around you. The air is full of lots of different gases, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and others, and they are all evenly mixed together. And that is what makes the air around you classified as a solution. But normally we do think of solutions as being liquids. And when I take something like salt and I dissolve it in water, I get salt water and the salt and water become evenly mixed and I get a solution. And so we will focus on those liquid solutions, but it's important that you understand that solutions are created when things are evenly mixed. Liquid solutions, which is what we're going to focus on, are usually formed by dissolving a substance in water. And so you can see that we have our sugar and we put some sugar in the water and after the sugar dissolves, we get our solution. Dissolving a solid in water changes its physical state. It creates a liquid solution. So we started with solid sugar and that solid sugar dissolved in the liquid water and we ended up with a liquid solution. So the solid sugar, once it dissolves, takes on the properties of that liquid, the water, and it becomes a part of a liquid solution. So it's changed its physical state. It's gone from being a solid to part of a liquid solution. The concentration of a solution describes how much of a substance has been dissolved in a certain amount of water. So you can see here that I have five cups and they all have the same amount of water, but I've dissolved different amounts of my orange drink mix in each of the cups. So you can see on the far left, this, has a very low concentration. It's barely orange at all. That's because only a little bit has been dissolved in that cup of water. While on the other end, this has a much higher concentration because much more of the orange drink mix has been dissolved. And so that's what concentration tells us, how much stuff has been dissolved in a certain amount of water. One way to increase the concentration of a solution is to dissolve more of the substance. So on the left, you can see that I've got a cup with a low concentration of the powdered drink mix, this blue drink mix. As I add more in, I increase the concentration. And on the far right, you can see there's a higher concentration. It's easier to tell because the color is a much darker blue and that would have more flavor and be sweeter because I've put more powder in. So you can increase the concentration by just adding more of whatever you dissolved. Another way to increase the concentration of a solution is to evaporate away some of the water. So you can see on the left, I have a pretty low concentration. I put it on a hot plate and evaporated away some of the water, but I didn't really evaporate away any of the food coloring. And so on the right, I ended up with a higher concentration. You can see that it's a darker green because I have the same amount of food coloring in a lot less water. And so that solution has become more concentrated. Adding more water dilutes the solution and decreases the concentration of the solution. So on the left, I have a solution that has a very high concentration and you can see that it's a dark red. And then as I add more water, I end up with a solution that has a lower concentration and you can see that it's much lighter red. I have diluted the solution 
and made it less concentrated. And so if you had a drink that was too sweet or you just thought it, it was too strong, you could add water to it and that would dilute it. That decreases the concentration of the solution. The physical properties of substances can be affected by becoming part of a solution. And so you can see here that the egg sinks in pure water, but when I dissolve salt and create salt water, the egg ends up floating. That's because salt water is more dense than pure water. And so the solution is more dense. The properties of the solution are different than the properties of just the pure water. And so the physical properties can be affected once we make solutions. The conductivity of certain substances can also be affected by becoming a part of a solution. And so you can see that the salt is not conducting electricity, the light bulb is not on, and the pure water is not conducting electricity. Pure water is actually not a very good conductor of electricity, but the salt water, the salt water is conducting electricity. Salt water conducts electricity, but salt and pure water are not good conductors of electricity. The physical properties have changed once those two things, the salt and the water, have become part of a solution together. But some physical properties remain unchanged, like the taste of sugar or the color of some substances. So once again, we have our sugar dissolved in our water, and this solution will taste sweet, and that's because the sugar stays sweet even after it's dissolved in the water. And our food coloring, which is blue, keeps that physical property and stays blue even after it's dissolved in the water. So the food coloring becomes evenly mixed with the water, but the food coloring stays blue, and that actually makes our entire solution blue. So I hope this video has helped you understand solutions a little better. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.